Hello, and welcome to the Bury Me Alive podcast. I'm your host, Technicality. And I'm your host, Ghostly. Boop, boop, boop. I don't know what that was. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm tired, but we're doing this. Yippee! I was busy yesterday. Running around a bunch. You act like we existed so. yesterday. I actually existed yesterday, I, and I don't typically do that. Without and me? And so, yeah. How dare you. Wow. You are the one who chose not to be there, so. Fair enough. It wasn't like a private event. Are <laughs> you excited about today's topic? Yes. From the little I've heard. Do you know what today's topic is? Something about a ghost? When you were a kid, did you ever play the game Bloody Mary? No, but in at some point during middle school, uh, we did a whole thing where we did uh, uh, we had to act out a certain scene uh, from a selection of different packets, and one of the people did a whole thing with Bloody Mary. It was simply lovely how, the, especially their props. Was I in that class? What? Wasn't I in that class? I think so. I'm pretty sure I was in that class with you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember what you're talking about. I played Bloody Mary as a kid. I actually didn't hear about it. Scared it. the crap out of me. I went over to my friend's house. Shocking, I have friends, I know. <gasps> But I went over to my friend's house, and I was like seven or something. Me and two friends, and we decided to play Bloody Mary, which didn't really make sense. Because I'll talk about it. I don't think we we really didn't know what Bloody Mary was. We just knew that was a ghost. You said her name three times with the lights off in a in a mirror, and then. Isn't there a mirror in the bathroom? Booze. Or is it yeah. just any mirror? Just any mirror. But we went to my friend's bathroom. And we took turns. And it scared us so bad. And then we were sleeping over that night. And I I remember because I had to go to the bathroom in the night. And I'm like, I don't want to have to go back in the bathroom after I summoned a demon. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going back in there. So I woke my friend up to help me go to, like, help protect me from the demon I summoned in the bathroom. I... I was fine, but... Here I am. But were you really the person... Are you really the person now that you were when you went into that bathroom? No, I'm more traumatized. And depressed. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Anyway. But yeah, today we are talking about Queen... Nope. We're talking about Bloody Mary, who is actually based on a real person, who I'll also be talking about. But first, for those who had... Uh, emotionally stable childhood let's talk about bloody mary first bloody mary is a legend of a ghost or phantom or spirit who is conjured to reveal the future she is said to appear in a mirror when her name is chanted repeatedly the bloody mary apparition may be malevolent which like evil uh and it depends on the variations of her legend but her appearances are most commonly witnessed in a group. So it's more likely for you to see her if you are accompanied by others. I feel like that could also be added to, like, if you see other people's faces behind you because your friends are watching you. Yeah. I have explanations about... 
in historic folk tales, the ritual is encouraged young women to walk up a flight of stairs backward holding a candle in a hand mirror in a dark house. When they look in the mirror, they are supposed to be able to catch a view of their future husband's face. But there's a chance that they would instead see a skull or the face of the Grim Reaper, and that would indicate that they were going to die before they had a chance to marry. What if? So, the purpose was for young women to see who they will marry one day, or see if they would die before they got to get married. What happens if young men did it? I don't know why I did it. Again, I didn't know the tale of it. I guess... I mean... I am gay. So it could have made sense. I guess any gay man who played this game would just see a skull because they wouldn't be allowed to get married. That's depressing. Same with lesbians. Hang on. Bloody Mary's homophobic. Gosh dang. Not necessarily. It could just be the time that you were living in. Because it didn't show you your future partner. It only showed you your future person you were married to. Oh, wait. That's true. Yeah. So it could be like regional or time period. Mm Mm-hmm. However, the game of Bloody Mary is not played the same way it was then. Today, Bloody Mary is meant to appear to individuals or groups who invoke her name, uh, and and by chanting her name into a mirror placed in a dimly lit or candlelit room, the name must be uttered about 13 times or some other specified number of times. I was always told three times. And then the Bloody Mary apparition would appear as a corpse, a witch, a ghost, or can, and she can be a friendly or an evil or even a demonic spirit. She is frequently seen covered in blood. The lore surrounding the ritual states that the participants may um, feel or hear her screaming at them, cursing them, strangling them, stealing their soul, drinking their blood, or scratching their eyes out. I mean, I love my eyes, and I prefer them not being ripped out, but I can always make new ones, it's fine. That's true. Uh, she does have two other common names, which are Hail Mary and Mary Worth. Hail Mary or Hail Mary? Mm. Hail Mary. Hail Mary is a Bible reference. Trust me, there's nothing holy about this. (laughs) Doesn't Hail Mary like being a last-ditch plan? Like a last-ditch effort? No, a Hail Mary is kinda. um, It's where you turn when you don't have any other option. So I guess, yeah, it's kind of like a last-ditch plan. It's uh, in reference to the Virgin Mary. Okay. Not related to this. Mary comes from someone else in this, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there's also a modern legend of Hanokosan in Japan, which strongly parallels Bloody Mary. Uh, she's a bit different, and... Like most Japanese folk tales, she is much more horrifying, but uh, I will not be getting into her today because she deserves her own episode. Some of the explanations, aka the mundane for Bloody Mary, um, are these are some of the theories. First, is staring into a mirror in a dark room for a prolonged period of time can cause hallucination. And facial features can appear to melt, distort, disappear, and rotate. While other hallucinatory elements such as 
strange faces may appear. Uh, it, there is a person, what's his name? Giovanni Caputo, very, very sorry for that pronunciation, uh, from the University of Urbino, states that the phenomenon he calls the strange face illusion is believed to be a consequence of a, quote, disassociative identity effect, end quote, which causes facial recognition through the brain to misfire in an unidentified way. This is still being studied. Um, so, and it's not uncommon in the dark because humans don't have night vision that certain things take other shapes so for example if you're doing this and you see a towel you might think it's a person etc yeah so it's like your brain trying to fill in the blank when it doesn't have enough information to properly make a picture exactly there is some debate on if bloody mary is based on a real person However, the main person who has been put up to be the one referred to as Mary is Mary I of England, who is the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. Um, Her nickname was Bloody Mary, and let's let's talk about her. With a nickname like that, you're going to have some interesting stuff going around. Honestly, she's kind of an icon. How so? Let's, let's talk about it. She was the first woman to rule England in her own right and didn't simply inherit the throne. And she seized it with unprecedented ambition from those who sought to thwart her. It is how... Uh, Malin Soli from the Smithsonian describes her. Centuries later, she is remembered as one of the most reviled figures in English history and has been quoted as Bloody Mary. And she has now been a mythologized violent person being no more violent than her father, Henry VIII. If you don't know Henry VIII, you clearly don't know Six the Musical, but he is famous for having six wives, and uh, he ended things with all of them. He was famous for beheading people as well. So how uh, you remember... The six wives of Henry VIII is divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. And he was no joke with beheading. Funny thing is... He also sucked. He was quite sexist. I was listening to one of the songs from Six uh, this morning on my run. Good. Good. Which song? Uh, It was... All you want to do is really good running music. That's what I put on. Uh, don't lose your head. Oh, that's about uh, Anne Boleyn, who did, in fact, lose her head after being beheaded. Kind of defeats the purpose of saying, oh. don't lose your head. But... She was someone. Anyway, let's talk about Mary. She was born on February 8th. Eight, eight, February 18th in 1516, and she was not the son that her parents were wanting at all. But she survived infancy, which is shocking in this time period, and she became the beloved princess that people, and people adored her until she was in her teenage years when her father began dating Anne Boleyn. Yeah. We're just talking about her. Huh? Which wife was she born to? Uh, Catherine of Aragon. Wait, hang on. Wait, sorry, if you try your dummy, you will try that again. Hang on. Careful, we can't play. She was the first wife, she was divorced. Ah, okay. 
Uh, but because of Anne Boleyn, it meant that the king divorced Catherine, and the Catholic Church was not happy about it and declared illegitimate, downgraded from, like downgrade. So because the church rejected Henry, it meant that they went down in social status. So Mary went from being the princess to a lady. Mm -hmm. And she was separated from her mother. And Mary refused to acknowledge the validity of her parents being divorced or her father's status of head of the Church of England. And it was 1536 when Anne got executed and Henry married Jane Seymour. And after that, Mary finally agreed to accept the fact that her parents were no longer together. What was she doing? Rough to childhood. Except that, like, was she just not acknowledging it at all, or? Yeah, she just wouldn't acknowledge it. Uh, she was welcomed back into the court, meaning they were placed back on the throne. And she ended up surviving Henry, her three other stepmothers, and she got to see her younger half-brother, Edward V, I believe, or the sixth, um, take the throne as a Protestant reformer, and he adopted a stance to, ca- like, he, dis- he bleh, adopted a stance against her very intense catholicism and then had and then edward died six years later so he tried to leave the crown to his cousin lady jane gray excluding those next in line which were mary and her younger half-sister elizabeth trying to completely remove them from the succession mary could have sought refuge with her other family members in europe because she had a lot of them after all those wives mm-hmm. and but she chose to remain in England and fight for the crown because she thought it was rightfully hers which it was slay do we know why uh, the older brother she, decided not to give her the crown um he said that it was his father's wish which kind of stupid uh henry the eighth is kind of known for being sexist so but wasn't he trying to give it to another girl yep how does that work we don't think too hard about him he had questionable taste obviously uh she decided to gain support from nobles across the country despite not being very liked by a lot of people and then she went to London. She went with Elizabeth, her younger sister, and they went to England's capital together. And Mary went as queen, and Elizabeth went as queen in waiting. Uh, she ha- was in power for five years, and she navigated a bunch of challenges associated with her status as the first English queen to wear the crown in her own right instead of just being handed it for whatever reason. She, instead of being the wife of the queen, she was just instead of being the wife of a the person. Queen? The wife of the king. Instead of the wife of the queen. Instead of only being the queen because she was married to the king she was the queen because she fought to get there. That's kind of sly. That's badass. Oh, no, I'm not allowed to I know, that. I love her. You can say that, that's fine. Uh, she prioritized religion above everything. She was very, very Catholic. And she, re- and she decided to add reforms and restrictions aimed at restoring the Catholic Church and its importance in England she it was quite controversial for her to do that 
Um, but the most controversial thing she ever did was she ordered 280 pro- protestants to be burned at the stake as heretics. Oh. Um, which is so what gave her the name Bloody Mary. That's not good. So, for those of you who are confused, which, fair enough, the reason she is known as Bloody Mary is because she burned 280 people alive. Oh, alive. Because they didn't decide to go along with the Catholic Church. Oh. Inheriting things from her father. Yeah, she... I mean, it's hard not... It's, like, hard to say that I was okay, but it's also hard to blame her because she had a rough... She had a rough childhood. I have a rough childhood. I'm gonna murder 280 people alive. Okay, I just said it wasn't right. (laughs) I also just said murder 280 people alive. (laughs) I'm not sure how you murder 280 people dead, but we, we ignore that part. You just keep stabbing. Wow. Just keep stabbing. Uh, stabbing, she also stabbing. said, huh? Just keep stabbing, just keep stabbing. Just keep stabbing, 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 stabbing. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she was also known for laying the groundwork in initiatives among certain things, such as financial reform, um, exploration of naval expansion, and a bunch of other stuff that was actually really good for England, but what would be built upon by her successor, Elizabeth I, that Mary failed to do. Uh, That sentence didn't make sense. Let me try that again. She set the groundwork for a lot of initiatives that were very important to England and still are, some of them being financial reform and the exploration of naval expansion. She was not able to finish doing these things in her time as queen and in her lifespan, but it was built on upon by her successor, a very long time later, uh, Elizabeth I. Mary did fail to fulfill the most important duty of any monarch, which is producing an heir, which means that she never had any. Adoption wasn't a really thing, really a thing, in the mid fifteen hundreds. Just take some random orphan child and claim it as yours. No one will know. Mm. How would they know? They're gonna know. They're not gonna know. I can't. They're they're gonna. They're, <laughs> I can't remember how that goes. I can't. We're trying to reference something that I don't remember how it goes. Um, but yeah, she failed to produce an heir. And she died at the age of 42 in 1558 because of um, unidentified health issues. Some of the things that were found were uterine cancer, ovarian cysts, or or influenza, and just not doing too well. Um, And that meant Elizabeth claimed the the throne, being the queen-in-waiting. was she good she was able to build on a lot of mary's groundwork and what she set up to have move forward that's awesome ish Uh awesome ish she did some questionable stuff how did that how does this fully tie into the Bloody Mary ghost story? So, uh, the reason that Mary of England is often linked to Bloody Mary is because Bloody Mary was a nickname of her before the folktale, uh, due to her having killed a bunch of people by burning them at the stake. Um, I've, the amount varies via the article. Uh, the Smithsonian says 
uh, around 250. Uh, Wikipedia says around 300, likely more. And uh, I can't remember which of my other sources it was, but another one says 400. But the point is she killed a lot of people. And so that earned her a title, which happened to be the title of a phantom. However, there are, again, some other people who some people think are the real Bloody Marys. There is Elizabeth Bathory, who lived in the 17th century. She was a Hungarian countess who allegedly tortured and killed around 660 girls and women and was bathed in their blood, uh, and she was accused of being a vampire. Why did they call her Mary, though? I don't know. Uh, Mary, the first of England, is the most referred to as being the Phantom. Um, but these are just some other people linked to it. Was the person... Uh, Mary Worth? The person we're just talking about. Uh, was this Mm -hmm. after the time of the original Bloody Mary? And maybe, like, the nickname was passed on? Uh, the one who bathed in people's blood? Mm -hmm. Uh, it was the 17th century. Mary was alive in the 6th, uh, and she was never called, and, uh, Elizabeth was never called, uh, Bloody Mary, so I don't know. How, I think it's because the phantom is often depicted being soaked in blood and she bathed in blood, so. Fair enough. Uh, another very, the, the other most likely person linked to the Phantom is Mary Worth, who has been identified as a woman who was, who either killed slaves escaping the south of America, why did I go so American there, um, through the Underground Railroad, or a woman who was burned at the stake during the witch trials in the early modern period. That's like the Lake Worth monster, but different. They just have the same name, but... Mary Worth and Lake Worth? Mm-hmm. I mean, she was definitely a monster. She killed slaves, but... Yeah. Yeah. A uh, really bad person. Um, yeah. That's not fun. No. Uh, so, Bloody Mary... I've probably said her name enough times that I should be covering my mirror next to me right now we should all we, oh. i say we nope all, we're not doing that but us two should just do it one time we'll just not, for the podcast I don't, record it for the podcast not not while we're recording from two different spots no, no, we, yeah we can do it but we could have like we can go over to one of our houses and then we can try it out right. and record the whole next thing. time i redo my hair we'll use Cal's broken mirror oh, that yeah. she has in her bathroom <laughs> while my hair dye is processing. <laughs> and we'll do Bloody Mary because I dye my hair at her house. But yeah, the broken mirror would be perfect. It, it'll be great because exactly. it's like at the top of it is just slightly warped so that you don't notice it unless you look at the door. Oh, I can bring my candles. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Do you have any candles at yours? Yes, I do. But yeah. Okay, maybe we should use yours because. I a lot of my, I use my candles for prayer and stuff. So maybe I should keep my prayer candles away from my demon summoning candles. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I need that on a t-shirt. Keep your demon candles away from your prayer candles. Uh, but yeah, I've just ha- for those of you who don't know, I just have a mirror in my bathroom, like a stand up, not a stand up, but one of those long mirrors, and it broke. Yeah. But it, it didn't fall out of the case full length mirror it just has cracks all throughout it and yeah. it's just been like that for a year no one's touched it so it's fine it's it, there's we no bad luck associated with it. broken mirrors definitely not yeah we've mentioned it a few times on the show uh and someone i know uh ended up listening to our show and they were concerned for your safety. I feel like with most <laughs> of... Because you have a broken mirror. I feel like with most of the bad luck stuff, it's more of just a bad idea. 
Like, broken mirror. So, Sharp yeah, like, opening glass. an umbrella inside. Uh, or walking under a ladder. It's like, yeah, that's bad Wait, luck. that's it's a, a bad thing. idea. Yeah, don't walk under a ladder. <laughs> Especially when something's on top of it. Like, oh. That's just liable uh, anyway. to fall on. <laughs> uh, another <laughs> reason that um, Mary of England is associated with Bloody Mary is because Bloody Mary's whole purpose in her original ritual was to show young women the face of her future husband. So, Mary, being raised by quite a few different, I get kind of, I guess stepmoms is the best word for them, uh, can guide those in that. And she actually was known for having a very healthy marriage with some guy from Spain. I didn't write down his name. I just wrote guy from Spain. Uh, but she was in fact married and happy in her marriage, which is very rare for monarchy, especially in England and in the 16th century. So you go, girl. I hate that I just said that. Murder people on healthy marriages. It sounds like I just said, make sure you murder people and murder healthy marriages, but you ignore that part. (laughs) No healthy marriage for you. Imagine having a healthy marriage. I found, I saw this thread on Tumblr, uh, with some transphobe arguing about detransition rates, and... Someone said, okay, but the divorce rate is about 20% higher than the detransition rate, so... And they're like, so? And another person replied and said, once the once we've reached a 0% divorce rate, then we'll talk about detransition rates. That is very random. I, it was so random, but I thought it was so funny, like... Because they're not at all linked. Like, yeah, marriage is also supposed to be a permanent decision, Karen. Uh, so explain your three ex-husbands. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Not really, but... I'm sure there's, like, nice people named Karen out there who just get the uh, short end of the stick because of the internet. Most people actually named Karen are just n- normal, decent people. <laughs> I've met a mean Karen. They worked at the library. They don't work there anymore. I would think she died. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Um, you, you can't commit murder. She was like me. 90. <laughs> that just, just startled the shit. Oh my god. <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, that's all I got on Bloody Mary. She's fun. Mm-hmm. I like her. In reference to our episode from uh, two weeks ago. Not last week, but the week before last week with Sanders ads. Uh, in an episode, the sides need a nice day. Um, <laughs> there's one where Janice lets Remus summon Bloody Mary. And he's like, wow, that girl's a real hoop. We're getting drinks on Tuesday. She's so nice. <laughs> so, yeah. You go, Mary. Unless you're that one person from the South. Then, then they'll disappear in a hole and die. Oh, they are the one, yeah. Um, if you're Mary Worth, go screw yourself. Bye bye. We're glad you're dead. Anyway. That, that got really. That got. <laughs> <laughs> go summon Bloody Mary. I don't care if you get haunted for the rest of your life. It'll be more interesting to be haunted than not to be haunted. Go summon Bloody Mary. You got this. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Bear Me Alive podcast. As a reminder, I'm your host, Ghostly. And I'm your host, Technicality. I know it's annoying, but listening to our show is a huge amount of support. We just like to have a fun little silly time here. So having someone listen to it we're glad you're here and that you kept up with our shenanigans for however long this episode turns out to be 
Uh, if you do want to support us more, you can. If you're listening on YouTube, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to us so that way you know when we post new videos, and go ahead and drop a comment and say something nice. Maybe leave some compliments for Bloody Mary in our comments today. Uh, and if you're listening on Spotify, go ahead and rate us by pressing that little star button so that way more people see our silly little thoughts. And tell us your silly little thoughts by interacting with us through our Q&A and poll features because, again, we like hearing what you have to say. We hope to hear and see you all again sometime soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>